hey 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 welcome to my channel my name is Paula and in today's video I want to touch on the topic about purchasing secondhand luxury and uh, has something changed in my mind I've I feel like I've been quite a big fan of buying pre-owned luxury secondhand pre-loved whatever terminology we like to use here when I first started getting into luxury when like years ago I didn't dare to touch on any like pre-owned stuff. I probably didn't know enough. Plus I was new in luxury world. So kind of getting the experiences of going to boutiques was all I wanted and so on. So I started with actually purchasing new. But when I got deeper and deeper into this, this, <laughs> this stuff, I started to kind of notice that it would be possible to save a lot of money if I would purchase something that is pre-owned, I would get access to some bag styles and models that are no longer in production. Usually meaning that there is an even better price point on those. And I could grow my, my luxury items, the amount of them, probably a lot faster than what I could have done if I needed to buy everything new from the boutique. So I definitely have been a fan of buying pre-owned and don't get me wrong I still do it and, and so on but there was a time point years where I was only looking to buy pre-owned I felt like maybe it's not even worth it to buy new that's what I was thinking as if it's always possible to save money and so on well out of that thought I've grown out a bit but uh, now if I'm getting to the headspace that I've been for a while. I'm kind of leaning more towards buying from the boutique and not pre-owned. And I wanted to film this video to kind of have a discussion. If, uh, if anything like this has happened to you, or if you have any guidance for me to get back on the like pre-owned train. That would be appreciated. <laughs> so basically, the shift that has happened in my head is that I'm less drawn towards buying pre-owned than I used to be. And I am 100% certain that it has everything to do with the insecurity of all of these platforms where you can buy pre-owned. And... I think there definitely are some trustworthy platforms and I feel like everyone who buys pre-owned needs to realize this themselves that it's always possible to get a fake. It is always possible to get something that you do, wasn't expecting. And that's not really the problem I have. The problem I have is the doubt on how these pre-owned companies, pre-owned sites deal with in case the item turns out to be fake, in case the item turns out to be something that it wasn't supposed to be. And I do get it that they need to have some proof that it's just not enough that the buyer sends them a message and says like, hey, it was fake, refund me. Like, obviously not. But that is something that I have like doubts on in my mind because I have heard some quite like crazy stories. Uh, for instance, from Bestier Collective, which used to be my primary place to shop pre-owned because there was such a huge selection and you could like bargain from the price points and you could ask questions and photos and and usually because there were private people selling, you could have maybe gotten a bit better price than if you would have purchased from like a professional company that sells pre-owned stuff. But that also comes with its downfall. So when shopping from a private person, there really isn't that much legislation protecting those type of purchases. And like not being able to return things definitely is a question mark. And I do get it, like you're buying pre-owned, you need to know what you're doing, but in case the item is not what you were expecting, there is no protection. And that's what I have learned about Vestir Collective, not 
through my personal experiences because my all of my experiences have been good but through others and how they deal with scenarios where the item has turned out to be fake or there has been a lot more wear than they the seller listed or photographed and whatnot so that has gotten me a bit hesitating to purchase from bestiaire collective or similar platforms where private individuals are selling items where the prices probably are better for the items there are professional companies who are also selling luxury goods and if they are actually like i don't know proper companies they do offer a return option without any kind of questions asked which is nice and that is probably something i could or I have also looked into, but the prices on those sites are a lot higher. And when the price goes up, it actually goes already quite close to the original boutique price. So here I am thinking, what's worth what? <laughs> because if I would um, buy the least expensive one from a like private individual take the risk myself that it's not what it's supposed to be but if it is authentic and looks exactly as i thought then i've made a great deal but there are risks and if i go for a company that sells them there are probably less risks uh, or at least i'm able to return things if certain situations happen, but the price is a lot higher, understandably. But how close does the price need to go before I'm then more inclined to shop new and get, get that experience? And this is kind of where my head is right now. I feel like there is a complete difference if you would manage to find like amazing deal something like 95 percent less of the original retail price and buy it from a private individual that then the price point is probably so low that if it turns out to be fake or whatnot it doesn't really matter but there is a chance that you would get a great deal but when we're talking about hundreds or even thousands of euros that comes with that risk i don't know i've become a bit more hesitant in this um and I don't really, have you noticed the similar type of thing happening to you and your thoughts? I don't know, is it because I'm getting older? And well, at that, my financial situation is also improving for what it was like five years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, which is natural. Um, so like saving up for a uh, four, 400 euro pre-owned piece, when I was younger was manageable now it maybe is manageable to go save up a bit more money in the same amount of time so of course like these things might have something to do with it but I'm still very much enjoying deals that's probably why I enjoy going to designer outlets because they sell well authentic stuff that's a topic for a completely different video if outlet made stuff is as good as boutique made stuff but yet again they are still authentically that brand and it's possible to get deals i love that uh but but then i'm kind of struggling with this because i love the concept of recycling fashion I love the concept of not buying everything new. It doesn't have to be new, especially with these type of timeless pieces. It's, it kind of um, makes me also feel good as a consumer because there's nothing wrong with those pieces, especially if people take care of them. So why not prolong their life? And if you don't enjoy it anymore, just like sell it to the next one and so on. I love that concept also from the environmental perspective it's just not really sustainable that everything that we would consume would be new there is so much stuff in the world so actually like recycling items is wonderful but then there is a lot of money attached to these items 
And I don't really know if, if I am okay with that risk. I don't know if any more would be the correct term here, but I'm not okay with that risk. Uh, or I am less okay with that risk. I don't know. Um, after not being so active on Fester Collective anymore, I have tried to look for new sites, more from the like professional companies point of view of what is out there and where I could potentially shop. And I have found some companies that have great stock and they kind of get updated frequently and, and, and all, and you can return things and so on. Uh, and for me, it then kind of depends. I feel like the previous pre-owned piece uh, from the handbag sector that I purchased is my uh, Chanel wallet on chain. This beautiful black number in lambskin and silver hardware. And because I wanted a Chanel walk, I was 100% certain I would not purchase this new. So I did need to find a reliable place to shop. And I did find one. Uh, I would have been able to return this without questions asked. They also said they authenticate stuff. Well, everyone says that, right? So I did two separate authentications myself to find out that this is authentic. So that's kind of, um, I was so excited to find this because black is like the classic one and the prices new for these are crazy. <sighs> So that was like all went well, but considering how much I usually spend time on these type of pre-owned sites to scroll down on items and find deals and so on, I've kind of stopped doing that. And now I'm basically scrolling if I have a specific item in mind that I kind of want to see what the price point is on the pre-owned to then also figure out what the price new from the boutique is, what the potential price pre-owned, Am I truly that interested? And so on. So yeah, here we are. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, balancing, I guess, uh, between what I truly want and so on. But I also feel like my taste has maybe gotten a bit more expensive than it used to be. And that's not really nice either, which means that it doesn't matter if buying pre-owned or new. The prices for those items are going to be bigger than they used to be. So that might also be why I'm shopping less, <laughs> maybe. But anyhow, I would be so curious to know your thoughts around shopping pre-owned. And uh, if you've done it before, how do you feel about it now? Do you have similar thoughts that I do of uh, if and when something is inauthentic or there's problems with it? Like, how do companies deal with that? So yeah, everything that comes to your mind, I would be so curious to know. So let's continue in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.